Hey everyone, welcome to Video Game Finds Part 124. A lot of consoles this time. I went to a flea market and there was a small time reseller and I pretty much bought all his stock. This is a Nintendo 64, not the ice blue, but the clear blue version with the controller. Also some spare controllers which uh, who look to have a good, uh, good controller stick. A yellow one and a blue one. The next console he had was a uh, NES set that I have over here. NES in good shape, as you can see, still really uh, clear, um, clear gray instead of that yellowed gray that you have often. Also, a uh, GameCube that I have here on the side. This is the GameCube. The purple version came with a memory card, purple controller, and a black controller, and also a set of games. And with those games, I struck the one in a million chance of picking up a GameCube game at a flea market that I didn't have. It's not the Donald Duck, by the way, not the Mickey Mouse Magical Mirror, not the F1, even though I don't have these three games in my collection, but I don't really want them in my collection, but this one, Darkened Sky. Uh, it's an adventure RPG type game, and I didn't have it, so... Picking up a game at a flea market that I don't have in my collection is something that doesn't happen often. But it happened again, this same flea market, but you'll see that later. From that same guy, a random array of games. Super Mario Bros. Tetris, Nintendo World Cup 3-in-1 for the NES. FIFA 99 for the Nintendo 64, that came with that Nintendo 64 I showed you earlier. Because I don't pick that up if I don't have to. Zelda Majora's Mask. Super Mario 64. A Bugs Life Complete Inbox. And Mario Kart Complete Inbox, the uh, player's choice version. Then for the PSP, Popolo Croix, or Popolo Croix, or not 100% sure how you pronounce that. And this is that other game that I was talking about, Jean d'Arc, for the PlayStation Portable. I played this game and it's great. It's by far one of the best uh, turn-based strategy, strategy RPGs that I've played. And... Um, I think it would contest Final Fantasy Tactics for the best, because it is really, really good. And as far as I know, this game only got released in America, so the copies you find here are always imported. And um, I didn't have it in my collection, so I'm really, really happy to have that now. Untold Legends, Anno 1503 New World Gold Edition, and Nox, both PC DVD games. The last item that came from that guy is this complete unbox Nintendo 64 uh, European version. and. It's basically the most boring edition because it's the gray one with the gray controller. But still, it's a Nintendo 64 complete in box and I think I paid about 30 euros. So, it's a good price in my opinion. Let's take a short sidestep from the video games and take a look at the board games I picked up. Um, as you know, this man-child loves board games. I love all everything that has to do with games, I love it. And uh, flea markets are the perfect place to pick up board games. Seriously, if you like board games, Go to a flea market. You will, won't will find a lot of retro games nowadays, but board games. So many, so cheap. For this whole pile, I paid 5 euros in total. 5 euros. It's a new sealed copy of uh, The Mole, which is a game about uh, deceit and betrayal. Then we have Hali Hali, which is a kid's game that I bought for my girlfriend. She works with kids and uh, it's, a, it's actually a fun game, even if you're an adult. But you have to play with kids, not with other adults. Then uh, Catan, uh, the Settlers of Catan uh, da, uh, dice game, didn't buy this for myself, bought it for a friend who also loves board games. And then the two most awesome pieces that I found today, uh, board game wise. The Treasure and the Key. I never heard of it, but just look at this. Look at this box. Would you not want to play this as a kid? Even if the game sucks, it's still worth having because it looks so cool and it has a lot of cool uh, items with it as well. And talking about cool items. Hero's Quest. This box is filled with a miniature army. And just check out this guy on the front. He's battling with this huge sword and a wizard there. And Awesome! This is just an RPG in a box. 
I can't wait to actually play this game now to find someone to play it with. Um, like I said, 5 euros. All these that you saw, 5 euros. And again, if you like board games, go to a flea market. You will be amazed. Then, some PC big boxes, Game Boy games and a PlayStation 1 game. And remember, we're still at the flea market and we're not done yet. There's two more items and one of those is special. Special in all kinds of meanings. So, for the Game Boy, there is Adventure Island Part 3, Aliens in Paradise and Parodius. And the other item that came with this is this complete in box, Game Boy Color, the pink version? Yeah, I think it's the pink version. The box is still in great condition. It's actually funny how I got this. There was a woman selling two Game Boy Color sets and she had all kinds of cheap plastic paraphernalia with it. Uh, amplifying glass, uh, connector cables, uh, protection box etc and those two sets had like 25 crappy games and these two and in total she wanted 35 euros for both uh, both the sets so 35 for one set 35 for the other and I said listen I buy this one with these two games I give you 35 you keep the rest you make some more profit I just want these I don't need all that plastic crap and yeah she agreed after some uh, persuading and um, yeah, I think I got a good deal because these are two uh, cool games, not that easy to find, and a nice complete inbox Game Boy Color. Then, P.O.D. P.O.E.D. P.O.D. P.O.E.D. Yeah, an obscure PlayStation 1 game, really early title, as you can see, no PlayStation bar here in the bottom. And uh, let's see what number it is, it's number 168, so yeah, that's early. Three big box games, Atlantis, The Lost Legend, The Dame Was Loaded, and Dead Reckoning. I'd never heard of this before, it could be a really cheap, shitty game, but yeah, paid one euro, so it was worth the guess. Let's see, it has something on the inside, looks to be a decent type, uh, descent type shooter game. So that was the PC big boxes. Now there's one more item, and I picked it up because I recognized it, and a couple months ago I wouldn't have recognized it, because it's a really, really old pre-LCD game and it's all the way over here it's a Merlin this is a handheld 6-in-1 game and that's before the LCD games it's made by Clipper and let me show you what's inside it's complete in the box I had one before I bought it I got that in a set and I actually sold that pretty fast and pretty good so that's the reason why I picked this up it's a really strange thing the previous one I had, I couldn't figure out how it worked or what I would be able to do. But um, I haven't tested this one yet, but I have good hopes that, it's work that it works. And I didn't pay a lot, so even if it doesn't work, I still got a good deal because the box is probably worth more than what I paid already. Then there's some stuff that I got in this week, because this was it for the flea market. Some random stuff before we get to a big set of Atari 2600 cartridges. And you may have noticed, but I went a little bit slow this week because uh, taxes, uh, it's tax season and uh, yeah, that, that purchase I had a while back with the, all those PlayStation 2 press kits, etc. That kind of hurt, so couldn't spend that much this week, but for the coming weeks I think we'll uh, gradually go up again. This is a Defender 64, which is a Commodore 64 light gun, but seeing the connector I think it also works on Atari 2600. Super Mario All-Star Super Mario World Combo Cartridge, Rad Racer for the NES, and Metal Gear Solid Snake Eater 3D for my uh, personal collection. I love Metal Gear Solid, but I'm going to be 100% honest with you, I hated Snake Eater. It's not just that I didn't like the game, I hated the game. The lack of the, um, the minimap was so bad for me. I, that first part in the jungle, I think I spent at least triple the time you'd normally need to finish that because I sucked at it. Um, yeah, let's get to those two those Atari games. As you might know, I'm not an Atari collector. I'm too young for Atari 2600. I never played a Lynx or a Jaguar when I was a kid, so there's no real connection to Atari for me. And because I don't have that connection, I'm also not that familiar with Atari 2600 games uh, in the sense of rarity and demand etc. I buy these set purely for sales and with sales I buy new games for my collection etc. But yeah, I just buy them in lots and uh, for a good price that I know I can make a profit on and I have no clue if I'm getting a rare game. 
Usually it's all commons and that I already have tens of thousands of times. But sometimes there's something rare in there like that uh, bumper thing I had a couple of weeks ago and X-Men, etc. In this set were some rare games as well. At least semi-rare. Also some really, really common games. Galaxian. Star Wars Empire Strikes Back. Sky Jinx International Edition Asterix, which I didn't know existed for the Atari 2600. But then again, I don't know a lot about Atari 2600. Pitfall, Boxing, that I at least have 15 copies of. Kangaroo, Galaxian, Hero, which appears to be quite an uncommon game. Dig Dug, Jungle Hunt, 3D Tic-Tac-Toe, Video Pinball. This is a pirate called Fortress Defense. Frostbite, Raiders of the Lost Ark, Moon Patrol, another Galaxian, Surround, Battlezone, Pitfall Part 2, which is also an uncommon one in Paul territories. Then we have a Double Ender, Xonox, Spikes Peak, and Ghost Manor, Junior Pac Man, Robo Tank, Robo Robot Tank, Space Invaders, ET the Extraterrestrial, Miss Pac Man, Stargate, River Raid, Hangman, Mario Bros, Mario Brothers, Star Wars Return of the Jedi Death Star Battle, which also appears to be uncommon, Pac-Man, Space Shuttle, and the last four or five, six are Missile Command, Battlezone, Defender, Demon Attack, Ghostbusters, and Frogger. One more game and then this video is over. Um, it's a PC big box game and I picked it up because, yeah. You'll see. It's an Ultima. And Ultimas are always good to pick up, especially if they're good, priced good. And this is the complete Ultima 7, which has all expansions. The Black Gate, Forge of Virtue, uh, Serpent Isle, and the Sinner Sword, or what does it say there? The Silver Steed. The Silver Seed. Hmm. Silver Seed, so. That's, uh, that's it for this week. I hope you enjoyed watching this and if you did, uh, check me out on facebook.com slash drretromd. Uh, subscribe to me on YouTube and uh, hope to see you again next time. Bye bye.